what I would like to do within the next 15 minutes, I would like to give you a clinical progress report on the entry inhibitor Mercutex B. As you know, hepatitis B and hepatitis delta virus share the same envelope proteins. <coughs> Due to that, they enter, the, they enter the hepatocytes by a similar pathway. Now, the requirements that we need for entering the virus is mostly reside in the L protein, and the N-terminal part of the L protein is very important for making a receptor interaction. The receptor that has been identified is sodium taurocholate co-transporting polypeptide. And Mercutex B is a peptide derived from this N-terminal uh, L protein part, and it's shown here. It specifically binds to sodium taurocholate co-transporting polypeptide at the basal lateral membrane of hepatocytes. It shows a very strong inhibition potential for HPV and HDV uh, in the picomolar range, AD picomolar IC50, and exclu exclusively targets parenchymal cell of the liver. So it has now been dosed to 272 hepatitis B and delta patients up to one year. And it induces an HDV RNA decline in hepatitis delta patients in the MUR201 trial that is already published, also an HPV DNA decline. So before I start, I would like to address the key questions of the rational behind using an enter inhibitor in a chronic infection. That's not something that you immediately probably understand. Of course, it will probably work for preventing infection after reinfection re of transplants. But the important point is that you have to assume that we cannot address with an entry inhibitor the internal amplification of the once established episomes like CCC DNA or circular RNA. However, we can interfere with the external amplification of these viruses either by infecting the same cell or infecting the next cell. So uh, this is something that we can efficiently block. So the key questions related to that and Stephen already addresses this, is whether persistence of HPV or HDV episomes in a chronically infected liver depend on de novo entry via NTCP. And then, of course, another important question is, can HDV RNA or CCC DNA be propagated through mitosis of hepatocytes? If that would occur at a major part, we wouldn't have any chance with an enter inhibitor to go. And then, of course, finally, whether the turnover of hepatocytes, infected hepatocytes, is fast, maybe faster than the turnover of a naive hepatocytes, which we know is not very, uh, uh, very, very high turnover. So we have some answers to these questions. You can see we now know that the persistence of episomes in chronically infected hepatocytes depend on the novo inf infection. And we know, and this is something you should uh, take, uh, take uh, into account that delta virus RNA can propagate by cell division, whereas HPV DNA, CCC DNA cannot. I come to that later on. Now, I would like to show you now the clinical data because most of these results of the clinical data give us also answers to that. This is the 202 study that has been uh, presented by Heiner Wedemeyer at the EASL meeting. So this is a study that is, that is one of the biggest study of Delta E antigen negative patients that were randomized for treatment arms. The patients were pre-treated with tenofovir for at least 12 weeks. And then Mirplodes was administered for 24 weeks in three different doses, two, five, and 10 milligram. And there was a control group that received the nuke all over the time. And there was another 24 weeks of follow-up. Um, Starting with the safety of this, we had no serious adverse events to Mercutex B during the treatment period. There were no discontinuation because of adverse events. Other adverse events related to Mercutex were mostly mild and moderate, and they resolved without intervention. There was no dose dependency. A low frequency of injection site reaction and a high patient adherence to the treatment. What we expected and what we saw was bile acid and asymptomatically increased in Mercutex B treated patients. And there were post treatment ALT increases in several patients, but without burthening of liver function and no jaundice. Important, bile acid increases were asymptomatic. And without going more into detail, we know now that there are individuals that do not have functional NTCP without any liver signs the pathological liver designs. So NTCP, in contrast to other transporters, OATB1B1, making rotor uh, syndrome, does not induce, lack of NTCP does not induce clinical symptoms in the liver. Now this is the biochemistry of this trial. 
you can see a dose-independent normalization of ALT levels in all Mercredex B treated arm in a biphasic manner, and no ALT normalization in the tenofovir treated patients. However, we had a re elevation of ALT levels after Mercredex B withdrawal, so that we do not end up with a at the end of the follow-up phase with a pronounced effect of ALT normalization. Now, this is the median HDV serum RNA responses. So you see in all of those three groups a pronounced reduction of HDV serum RNA levels and not in the control group. And in the 10 milligram group, we had a reduction of 2.7 log in median, which is about 500-fold serum reduction uh, of HDV RNA. Now, if you look at the individual patients, for example, of the 10 milligram group, we had, uh, uh, we observed that there was not a single patient that did not respond to Mercredix B. We didn't see any breakthrough on the therapy, and we developed a resistance test, and we could not develop any resistance against Mercredix B until week 24, something we, by the way, would expect because we target a cellular receptor that the, uh, that the virus requires and the resistance uh, would be not very much expected. However, we got a rebound after drug withdrawal at week 24 in almost all of the patients, as you can see here. Now, if you look carefully at the kinetics of the serum RNA declines, we could see that there is a zero order elimination kinetics observed. This would be expected for an entry inhibitor because Theoretically, we think that we eliminate infected hepatocytes by prolonging an entry inhibition and get, therefore, independent of an ALT normalization, a further decrease by a zero-order kinetics. And this uh, also reflects an individual difference in the elimination rates that we observed. And if you make a bioinformatic calculation, you can estimate that within two years of treatment, you have more than 60% of patients that cleared the virus, which was defined as less as one virion in the serum in, thir in 13 liter of blood. Now, we had the chance to get biopsy material from some of these patients, so we could look at the intrahepatic markers uh, in those patients. And you see here uh, the hepatitis delta virus stained by delta antigen staining within the liver of a patient before we started treatment with interferon, and these cells that are brownish here replicate the virus and express delta antigen. And after treatment, you saw that the cells really lose the hepatitis delta antigen. And in addition, we also lose the hepatitis delta uh, RNA. So Mercredix B monotherapy induces the elimination of HDV-infected hepatocytes. Now, as already mentioned, we did not see any change in S antigen, and this is consistent with the assumption that Delta preferentially replicates in cells with HPVs encoding integrates. I personally think that Delta completely decouples from CCC DNA in a hepatitis B virus infected cell. So it just uses the replication space that comes up with the extension of these integrated uh, uh, clones. Now, what about combination? So our idea, of course, was now, can a combination with interferon accelerate the elimination of these HPV, HDV-infected hepatocytes? I showed you the kinetics, the monotherapy treatment. Can we accelerate the process by giving interferon in addition? And of course, the next key question for the, uh, for the trial that will be presented soon is Mercredix B interferon combination. Can it induce HPS antigen clearance? And I cannot disclose the data of this trial yet completely, but I would recommend that you look at the presidential talk on Monday, November 12th from Heine, uh, and look at the abstracts that I show here. And I prom can promise you, you see very surprising effect, also an S antigen decline in the combination with Mercudex. And I go back to this pilot study that we once did. You may remember that this is published partially in this paper of uh, in Journal of Hepatology, where we had 24 p uh, patients that were randomized in three treatment arms, and we had here one arm that we started Mercredex treatment and then we switched to interferon, one that we combined Mercredex and PEC interferon and, and removed the Mercredex, and one control arm. And just let me show you 
um, two individual results that we got from these two arms. If you combine interferon with mercredex, you see a very pronounced reduction and negativation of HDV RNA in the serum of these patients. And if you uh, remove mercredex, you get under interferon a rebound of HDV RNA. And of course, uh, later on, you also have HDV RNA coming back. So there's a synergistic effect of the mercredex and the PEC interferon. And now we have to ask, how can that happen? I want to show you now some unpublished data on the possible mode of action, how that works. So if we look at an infected hepatocyte, I already mentioned it, that is infected with Delta virus, and we drive it into mitosis, then we know that the Delta RNA can survive this mitotic uh, 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 division. For HPV, CCC DNA, this is really completely different. We lose the CCC DNA during cell division, and we have to replenish by a de novo infection. This, of course, argues strongly against an angio inhibitor in Delta, or at least it only partially would allow to reduce that. Now, what is interferon doing in that process? That's what we uh, investigated. And I'll show you some results here. We did an in vitro experiment. We infected uh, HEPA RG cells with Delta, and then we put interferon later on in order to see the interference with replication of an established delta infection. And we, we found that there is no effect on interferon on delta replication. And if you stay in, we can replicate delta in MXA expressing cell lines. This tells us that interferon does not profoundly interfere with an established infection. Now, the RF you ask us, why, is, uh, why do you see an effect in clinics if you do not see an effect in vitro? And we investigated that. And I show you here an innate immune deficient cell line, UH7 and TCP cells, that have been infected with, with Delta. And then we split them 1 to 200 and let them grow up. And you see a clonal expansion of a single cell that is expressing Delta without any external loop. If you do the same thing in a... Uh, uh, in a HEPA RG cell that is immunocompetent, you do not see this spread. So cell to cell to spread by cell division is controlled in an innate immune competent HEPA RG cell. And if you knock out the sensor for the delta MDA5 and you abolish the induction of the innate immune response, then you restore the spread by cell division. And this can also be induced by using interferon exogenously. If we infect the cell here, we let the delta virus start to, to replicate, and then we, give interferon, then we split the cells and give interferon, then you see the following. You see, see with all interferons tested, alpha, beta, and lambda, you see an extremely strong reduction of the cell-mediated um, uh, transfer of delta virus. So what we think, is that the interferon is mostly interfering with the cell to cell spread that is mediated by delta in the, uh, in the, in the chronic infection and the antigen inhibitor blocks, uh, uh, blocks the outer part. <coughs> Regarding the second question, whether an interferon mercredex combination may synergize with respect to the S antigen loss, I show you this one trial that we did where we have an inter, uh, mercredex introduction without any change of S. This is S antigen in those, uh, I think, the seven patients. And then we have uh, no effect on S antigen. However, if we switch to PEC interferon, you see a pronounced effect on S antigen by more than 1.5 log in four out of seven patients if you switch to interferon. This is something you do not see if you just start interferon treatment in those patients. And we cannot explain that so far, but I can promise you that, and this is the trial that has now been set up, the MUR203 study, where we have the PEC interferon for one year alone, a two milligram interferon mercredex uh, arm for one year, a five milligram mercredex B PEC interferon arm, and a two milligram mercredex B control arm. 
that in these results we will have uh, pronounced effects on S antigen as well if we do combine these two markers and we have a very pronounced uh, consolidation of the observation of the synergistic effect of PEC interferon plus Mugludex on RNA. Now, Mugludex B is not only an important player for Delta virus control, it will be probably an important player for HPV cure in the combination with interferon alpha, and it may be that you do not even need interferon alpha as a key player. It would be very interesting to combine these two with other uh, uh, agonists or immune modulators, other interferons or uh, Rig I agonists or whatever TLR7, TLR8 agonists. Now, at the end, I would like to summarize here. <coughs> so, Mucludex is the prototypic anti CSP specific entry inhibitor that shows clinical efficacy in chronic hepatitis B and Delta. The virological responses uh, reflect the loss of infected hepatocytes. This has been shown for Delta, and we assume that this even occurs maybe better for HPV, so CCC DNA loss after treatment. Entry inhibition is an efficient way to block the novo HPV CCC DNA and HDV RNA formation and it results in the loss of HDV-infected hepatocytes. The monotherapy has curative potential if you may extend that for HDV-infected patients, and in a combination with immune modulators, we think that we may have a curative uh, approach also for B. So the status of Mugludex, it received orphan drug status by FDA and EMA. It received for the EMA prime eligibility status, and we recently received from the FDA breakthrough therapy designation for the development in Delta patient. We are developing an oral formulation, and there's a phase three study intended to start 2019, and aiming at a provisional approval in B and D co-infected patients as soon as possible. And I would like to thank the patients, the uh, uh, trial physicians and the study nurses, Sen Feng Zhang from my lab and Mauro Dandra for providing this unpublished data, uh, there were a lot of people in my lab that developed that drug, and also Gilead and Roche for provision of tetanofovir and PEC interferon alpha, and the study was financed by the Mu and Hepatera, and we also have a lot of public funding, and I thank you for your attention.